I am on a mission to strengthen, empower, encourage, and inspire caregivers to keep going, keep pushing, keep loving, and by all means to keep caring. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to season two of the My Favorite Girl Caregivers Corner podcast. I am your host, Priscilla Jean-Louis. All right, all right. Happy New Year to you and welcome again to the My Favorite Girl Caregivers Corner podcast. I am Priscilla. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode one of season two, Dear Future Dementia Caregiver. Before I go any further, I'd like to ask you to take a moment and subscribe to the podcast on whichever platform you are listening. That way you'll receive a notification whenever an episode drops. And then I want you to take a moment and share it with your family and your friends, especially those who are serving as caregivers. Whether your journey of caring has just begun or if you've been traveling on this road for a while, the conversations we are going to have are sure to strengthen, encourage, motivate, and inspire every listener to keep going, keep pushing, keep loving, and to keep caring. Y'all know that's my mission. As you may or may not know, I am the primary caregiver for my 79-year-old mother who I affectionately call my favorite girl. So that is the reason why I have named this platform what it is, my social media platform, my favorite girl in Alzheimer's. It is after uh, my mom, my lady, my favorite girl. And then I also have my 98-year-old grandmother and uh, both of them who are living with dementia. I know, right? Yep, two people. How? Only by the grace of God. We'll we'll get into that a little bit deeper in just a little bit. But uh, back to my my mom and my grandmother. These two, uh, these these are my ladies. They they are my ladies. Um, I I grew up in a small town down in Central Florida called Lake Wells, down there where Donald Duck and Florida's natural orange juice is made. Uh, shout out to my peeps down in, in Lake Wells. Uh, my mom met my, my grandmother a few years before I was born at this little old brick church located on the corner of C Street and Harding Avenue. Lake Wells Church of God by Faith. That's why I got my, my spiritual foundation I'll always be appreciative and grateful for that little old church down there in Lake Wells, Florida. Uh, But hold on. Okay, let me let me go ahead and explain this, too, because I know that some of you may be wondering what what do you mean? Your your mom met your grandmother. Well, nope. My grandmother, who I I love dearly. I don't play about my grandmother. Um, I care for her. Uh, My grandmother is not my blood relative. She's my love relative and you can't tell either one of us any different. Anybody that knows us, they know that's, that's just my grandma. It is what it is. Um, if you know, you know, at any rate, um, that's, that's that situation. But anywho, uh, every since I can remember my mom and my grandmother were, they were inseparable, whether it was church going to church, traveling back and forth to conventions, uh, going back and forth to those fifth Sunday conventions, uh, grocery shopping early, early in the morning, garage sale shopping. And let me tell y'all something. I absolutely hate it going to the garage sales. My mom, my mom would literally, uh, get the newspaper, cut them out, have them all lined up, be ready to go on Saturday mornings at six 30 in the morning. And I totally hated going to the garage sales with them because it was literally an all day long experience. But I absolutely love being with my mom and being with my grandmother. So I would get up early and I went with them because usually after the garage sales, it was also a grocery store run and we would go all the way over to Lakeland, Florida. I'm not sure if you know where that is, but it's down there in central Florida as well. And so 
Usually the trip would end up being a trip to the grocery store as well. It was just all day long. And I hated going to those places, but I absolutely love being with my my mom and my grandmother. And um, there wasn't a day that went by unless we were out of town and my grandmother just didn't go with us. Um, there wasn't a day that they weren't together. And there were very few of those days that uh, I wasn't tagging along right behind them or sitting up somewhere right up under them. And, you know, being up under them, I got to see and learn so much. My grandmother is a, a church mother and um, she's one who growing up did not believe in being late to church at all. She lived by that saying, if you are on time, you're late. Um, and, and she believed that we would be sitting up in church 30 minutes, sometimes an hour before church started. She was so timely that they gave her a key to the church so that she could get in the church. But that's, that's my grandma. She was, she's a church mother. I'm not going to say was because she still is come over here right now. She's always singing hymns and praying, um, three 30 in the morning. She'll wake up praying. But anyway, um, I, I, learn so many things just being up under them her and my mom and I think that's why my mom stuck so close to my grandmother because there were so many things that she too gleaned from my grandmother and the two of them you know they taught me what it means to genuinely love and care for all people neither one of them would ever meet a stranger never met a stranger. It could be somebody off the street they'd never seen. They did not care. They just, they love people. They love to give. They love to care. And I learned that from them. Um, I learned to to love and to sacrifice for and to care for family, to put the needs of other people above my own needs. And they taught me how to live out the scripture that says we are to do unto others as we would have them to do unto us. And uh, my mom, I, I watched my my favorite girl care for my grandmother, her mom. I watched her care for her who she too had Alzheimer's dementia. I remember when my mom brought my grandmother to live with us when I was around eight or nine year old, nine years old, somewhere up in there. Um, I had absolutely no real clue at the time what dementia was, what Alzheimer's was and surely didn't know the huge impact that it would have on my family, on me and on my future. But I, I watched my mom give her heart in absolute best every day to caring for her mom, my grandmother. Um, she kept her neat, clean, just like she did us, her children. When my, my grandmother got to the point where my mom could no longer care for her uh, in the more advanced stages of the disease, my mom had to make the choice to place her or make the decision rather to place her in a nursing home. And even then, my mom working full time, she had four of us, four children at home. Um, she would still get up early, get up earlier than she needed to get up, make sure that we were we were good. And then she head out and go over to the nursing home to make sure my grandmother was cleaned up, dressed, hair done uh, every single day. Um, I didn't realize it at the time, but thinking back, I'd say that's where I learned the true essence of selfless sacrifice, seeing it lived out by my mom and how she cared for her mom, my grandmother. Fast forward almost 40 years later, and I am now in the place where my mom once was. I am her caregiver. Right around about six years ago, my, my favorite girl was diagnosed with dementia. Prior to the diagnosis, we noticed some slight changes where she would misplace her purse or her keys. She just couldn't remember where she had put them. She would pick up my oldest daughter from school, my oldest daughter, Destiny. She is definitely Granny's girl. They love each other, those two Um those two were also inseparable. They they just had their their way and they, they still do. But anyway, Destiny 
Uh, my mom would pick Destiny up from school. And so Destiny tells me one day, she says, Mom, um, I'm, I'm scared to ride home with Granny. And I'm like, well, you know, what are you talking about? You're scared. And she said, well, you know, Granny will be driving and we'll get to the light and it's her turn to go. And she would just wait. And sit there and then when the light would turn green for the other cars, she would just pull out in front of cars. And so from that point, you know, I started to watch her even more closely. And as the time progressed, so did the stages of dementia. And, you know, we had no choice but to stop her from driving. And that was the beginning of me being thrust full time into this caregiver journey. My favorite girl was no longer capable of caring for herself. I had a choice and without a thought or hesitation, I, I made the decision to take care of her. I made the decision that I was going to make sure that she was okay. And little did I know that 11 months later, I had to make the same decision for my grandmother by love. Sitting at work one day, I, I received a phone call and only had a second to make a split decision uh, regarding her and her care. And without exchanging words, I made the decision to move her up here from Lake Wells and into our home with us. You know, that that's my grandmother. She's, she's family and you take care of family and I wasn't gonna have it any other way. Caring for two with dementia is, it's a lot. And uh, it definitely has its challenges. Uh, my favorite girl is she's at a more advanced stage of the disease than my grandmother. And uh, for me, sometimes it's just it's not so much the, the care side of it. The care side is it's become a little bit more now with my grandmother. But the care side is not really the side that... Um, it's difficult for me. For me, it's it's watching the effects of the disease on, on my favorite girl, on my mom. Um, at times, some of the things that happen, some of the things that she does, I often say there's never, ever, no day is ever the same. You just don't know what you're, you're going to wake up to. And, uh, you know, I've seen a whole lot of things over these past uh, almost six years that I've been living with her and, um, you know, those are the things that can, at times they can, they can pull at everything within you, uh, within me. And so that's because, you know, it's not just, my mom is not just somebody that I just provide care for that. That's my mama, y'all. That's, that's my lady. That's, that's my girl. And so watching this disease and how, especially as it advances and some of the things that uh, she endures, some of the things that um, the behaviors that come along with it, the things she's at a point right now where, you know, she's on, on more finger foods uh, because she, it doesn't correlate anymore that a spoon is a spoon and a fork is a fork and you use the utensils to eat your food with that, that doesn't really register. It doesn't register anymore. And so, you know, it's things like that, that it, they sometimes can, can really pull at your, your heartstrings. And so, um, you know, being where I am now and thinking back to when my mom was caring for her mom, I find myself applauding her, her strength and the grace that she exuded before me. I know it was hard and no doubt, I'm sure that her pillow may have been filled with tears many nights, but I watched her press on and she kept right on caring. Through her faith and her trust in God, I think she learned, uh, even as I am learning daily, that God's grace is truly sufficient enough. That's it. That's how I do it. Um, I do it by, by the grace of God. My faith in God is what helps me to continue doing it every day. My, my faith in God is what sustains me. Uh, it's what allows me to show up every day and give caring everything I have. It's what I got to see in action through my mom. And now 
is what I get to put in action with my mom. Second Corinthians 12 verses nine, uh, the B part of verse nine and verse 10 out of the new living translation. It says, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Yes, I have my weak moments, many weak moments on this caregiving journey. But what I've also learned and what I've found is that when I'm at my weakest, God really is at his strongest within me. And he's shown me. And I know and I am confident that I am graced to care. Dear future dementia caregiver, I don't know if you will ever really be fully prepared for the things that come along with this caregiver journey. But during this season, myself and my guests, we're going to share with you some of our experiences, some of the ways that we cope and some inspiration to help you as your journey begins. I can't say it will be easy because some days will be really tough, physically, mentally, emotionally, but I will tell you, you can do it. Some days you will definitely feel like you can't go another moment and you'll want to quit. Don't. There'll be times that you will laugh and laugh hard Look for those moments in every day. And when you can't find them, create them. And when those moments of loneliness come, and trust me, they will come. Know that you're not alone. We're here for you. We've got your back. And never forget, when you're at your weakest moment, that's when God's power works best. You, too, are graced to care. Hey, listen, the next podcast episode is scheduled to drop on January 21st, and I'm super excited to announce that uh, best-selling author Vicki Nolan Fitch, the author of Dementia with Grace, is going to be on as our special guest. And so want you all to prepare, go ahead and mark your calendars now and prepare to tune in as we talk about this thing a little bit further. Dear future dementia caregiver.